so Tiny Dot finds herself in this magical magnified world and uh, she kind of wakes up and suddenly hears this encroaching kind of wave of destruction which rolls into the screen and we see that effectively the, the background is actually unravelling and it's, she's kind of running away from her world as it's destroyed. This is Professor Fletcher's Cellscope invention. It's basically a Nokia mobile phone and microscope put together. So in a remote village in Uganda, for example, a nurse can photograph a magnified blood sample, then send that anywhere in the world for instant specialist diagnosis. Brilliant technology, diagnosing malaria, helping to save lives, and Nokia asked if we could do something to celebrate it. And that's when we decided to give ourselves a challenge of doing the world's smallest film using the same cell scope technology. And we kind of panicked. We thought, oh my God, you know, we, we can't animate blood cells. They're, they're way too tiny. Everybody who was involved in this project was uh, excited about it, but a little bit worried about it because we'd all committed to it, but we still didn't know it, if it could be done. Yeah, so this is the Nokia N8 that we used to shoot the film on. It's got a 12 megapixel camera and really nice Coles Ice lens, so it was perfect for the job. This is dot number 20. That's dot number 17. Dot oh, number 17. Whoa. She's nine millimeters tall. We have 50 different replacements of the dot and three stand-ins for each pose. For this, yeah, we've gone with replacements because, you know, she's way too small to be able to man manipulate or, or bend or do anything at all. You put one character in that's in one pose, you take the frame, you take that character out and then replace it with a, another character in another pose. Animating every day, I think I'm probably, probably making about four seconds a day. When we were asked that the, if the public could be around about nine millimetres tall, then it was obvious that we couldn't make it in the conventional way. So we started thinking about kind of printing techniques and kind of maybe we could print in 3D. What a 3D printer does is instead of laying down ink in one level, it lays down a resin. Instead of just having one layer of ink, you have several thousand layers of resin gradually building up. They're designed in two dimensions on, on a piece of paper. Then we give those 2D designs to the 3D modeler and then they come back from the 3D printers like this. Then when we've got the puppet off the rigging that supports it, we stick them onto some very fine wire and then set about painting dot. What I have to do is stop talking and stop breathing for a couple of seconds. Uh, the, I mean, the, the scale we're working at, we're really kind of just within the realms of possibility, really. You can't actually print any smaller than this without the, the head's not forming or the wrist not forming. And we rigged her hair as well, so we get a kind of sense of momentum as she runs along. It's been a foot that's come off. It's We've lost a head. A head, yeah, yeah, quite early on, an arm. For this film, we had to build our own cell scope to fit the Nokia N8, and uh, it was built by our engineer, Lou. As you see, this fella is a, 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 obviously a cell scope where the only point of focus is actually on the glass, so there's no requirement for any depth of field, whereas our problem was we wanted a little bit, obviously, of depth of field because of the models, so that's why ours is different. We retrofitted a 1930s rostrum base with motors so that we could make tiny, tiny increments that are computer controlled. Here's our background, here's our set, and you can see above it we've got our camera and it's sort of mounted here. We've got our, our Nokia phone here with our, our cell scope. But to follow Dot, we start here. The set moves underneath the camera. That, that's where the precision bit come in, the precision mechanical engineer. When it went back to their start, it's got to be frame perfect. We use the full res images that come from the actual phone camera itself, you know, which we use for our, the final film. It just showed you dot on the B and we, you could see there was a big bar going into her head. So, so what I get off the animation floor is that we use what's called a back plate to digitally remove it. This has actually been one of the trickiest jobs to derig I've ever actually tackled. I think we've we just hit a thousand frames and dots here. 
holding up. She's holding up. I'm being pretty careful with her, but she's still got a, lot, a long way to go on her journey. So we'll wait and see.